Hello, everyone, and welcome to Wait, What? Why? The podcast that ponders the origins behind the things that we do. Thank you for taking the time to join us today as we discuss the origins of New Year's resolutions. I'm Nicole Gallagher. And I'm Dennis Gallagher. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Doing all right. I think I was just complaining about uh, getting old and my hips before we we went on the air, but by and large, I feel very very good. Yeah, I feel like that's just very thirty seconds ago. Thanks for that. You know, but I'm this getting is, old. And my hips hurt. This is audio. They don't need to know how old. All right. Yeah. No. I well. <laughs> yeah. Thirty-five year olds get bad hips. Look at me. Actually, if you if they went on any of our you know Instagram or whatever, they would know. That we know just what that I'm not 35. Yeah, <laughs> what are you saying, dear? I don't know. I'm just saying we, we probably don't look like we're 35 no. anymore. Hopefully I don't look like I have bad, bad hips, but no, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what that looks like. <laughs> they need video, right? They need video. You see, you see exactly. you walk, you yeah. would know. <laughs> if we, God, this guy hikes. He hikes. No, not so much anymore. He's working on getting around the block. No, we're working on hiking. We're, we're going to build it, it up that's so right. that next winter we're doing some like real outdoors yeah. winter hiking. Back in the game, right? Get back, back in, in the, the game. game. Skiing again. Yes. Yeah, I feel kind of broken. Yeah. But, anyway. Uh, be on that. <laughs> Thanks for asking. How are you feeling, dude? Oh, much better. We had like, COVID run yeah, through the COVID. house pretty uh, rampant. Yeah, it was rampant. Rampant through um, the house. You know, happy holidays to us. But well, and you know, hopefully <laughs> uh, opinions vary, but uh, the vaccinations did us well because uh, everyone had, you know, relatively mild. Oh, yeah, and just symptoms. like little head cold symptoms. Yeah. What were we saying? It was almost go to work symptoms back in the day. You yeah, know, it's, you, it was really weird because they were like, well, you can't come to work. And I was like, well, I feel fine, I though. I feel like I could come to work. <laughs> and they're like, no. <laughs> right, and you you're hockey, not allowed. Yeah, five years ago, 10 years ago, and you'd be like, I can't come. And like, you dude, you got to come to work. You're killing me. Yeah, it's yeah, a different world. It's, it's crazy, opposite. crazy time. It's definitely. But yeah, we had a little bout with it. And. Uh, Fortunately, we all fed very well, uh, fed well with it. So, yep, kids are getting back into the game, back to school. Yeah. Yeah. We're, it ro- was we're a, rolling. It was a slow start to the it new was year. A slow start to the new <laughs> but year. But here yeah. we are. Yeah. Quarantined for the holidays, for yeah. sure. Yep. Yeah. Quarantined for the holidays. And uh, two weeks in, but I don't, first, before we even get into that, I wanted to let our listeners know that we now have a Patreon account. This is what I did while I wasn't allowed to go to work. I've been really working on trying to, um, you know, boost our show and you get mean some you things idle? happening. You weren't idle with your time? <laughs> no. My wife is never idle with her time. <laughs> so I uh, made a Patreon account. If you go to any of our social media, you can click on the link in the bio, which will bring you to a uh, link tree, which has all of our social media links, our website links, and other things. But the first link there is become a patron of our podcast. There's two tiers to choose from. The first tier is $5, and you get early access to all of our episodes and behind-the-scenes video clip or two from Den and I. You can also join as a proud patron, which is $10, and that also gets you early access to the episodes, but it gets you a shout-out on our podcast, as well as access to patron-only videos, posts, etc., Um, so it's kind of a neat little thing. You become a member of like our fan club or you become a patron of our podcast. You get access to some cool stuff. And if you are a patron for three months, you'll get a little or some cool swag delivered right to your doorstep as a a thank you from us for for supporting us. And who doesn't like a shout out either? Yeah. Right? We'd love to shout you out. I wish someone was shouting me out. (laughs) Um, so I was working on that. Um, and, you know, we just really want to thank you all. Our podcast has been doing, as as far as I'm concerned, sure. pretty well. Surprisingly well for us. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. I'm very excited about it. 400 downloads on a few of the episodes. And uh, so, yeah, you guys seem to enjoy what we're talking about and listening to us. Yeah, I might be so a little great. obsessed with looking at our downloads and what's happening. Um, but i also been working hard to try to get sponsorships. So the sponsorships and the Patreon is all just a kind of um, – it's just the next step in our podcast to help our show to grow and hopefully provide you with more content, yep. um, you know, more frequently or even some cool merch. I've been looking at some merchandise options. Yeah, and so. more things that we can, you know, talk about and give advice on and that kind of thing. So absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I've been doing while I had to quarantine. You're a busy gal, Mrs. Gallagher. You're a busy gal. <laughs> um, but getting back to... Even with the vid, you're busy. 
It's impressive. Well, I felt fine. Yeah, no. I, I, <laughs> it was a go-to-work call. You know, some people get really sick. I feel bad, but, right. you, you know. You had to lobby to get case, back early, yeah, right? The CDC yeah. changed its directive and you were firing up emails. Actually, they and, did. Yeah, they went from a 10-day yes. quarantine to a five-day yes. quarantine. And on uh, day five, I was like, so can I come back then? Thank you, CDC. Yes. Yes. Um, so I'm back. I was back today, and uh, it was great to be back, actually. I was Good. very I'm happy I'm sure that, that. Uh, the students are very happy to have you back. Yeah, well, we'll see. I have to whip them back into shape. They got you. Oh, all right. <laughs> One week, and they get right out of shape, don't they? They were, too. Yes, I'm sure. You had uh, subs that they were beating up on yeah, and everything else. Yeah. And, yeah, when the right. regular teacher's not there, I'm sure they Not literally way. beating up on Not just, literally, just, you know, good every other way besides literally. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so bringing our uh, slow roll into our new year and our last episode, we talked about the ball drop and we did. Um, I did post some pictures. Den and I on that on that episode talked about we were talking about when we went to New York. We took the kids to New York quite a few years ago. Now it was like and 2011. And I remembered and didn't remember. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then we were talking about who fell asleep, and um, I fell asleep this year. Before the ball, actually, you did too. But uh, I, I didn't. I have no interest in. You, yeah, I can't do it. I just can't do it. But I think I like actively just went to bed. And you stayed <laughs> up for a little bit. I did actually. I think I made yes. it to eleven thirty this yes, year, didn't I? Like that's that. right. That's right. Eleven thirty um, this year. So Very proud of myself. I wonder how everyone else did. If it was a, uh, you know, I don't know. I feel like you know things are kind of getting uh, up there again as far as people, you know, staying away and masking up and all those types of things. Ah, but it feels that way, but let, let's hope it's let hope let's hope it doesn't. Let's yes. hope it doesn't, you know, fully shut things down. Let's hope. Yeah. Yeah. So this week we are talking about New Year's resolutions. New Year's resolutions. Did you make Hard any? To stick to. <laughs> I, uh, you know what? I, I don't know that I call them New Year's resolutions sometimes because I guess it's kind of a scary term. It's something you got to stick with in this I don't make a lot of New Year's resolutions. However, I do have my own crazy version, which means you get a fresh start in the year and a new outlook on things. And say, yeah, I have my different goals. I want to try to grow my business and be better at the things I was needed work on last year kind of deal. And you know me. I always want to try to be better. Yeah. So I have goals and things that I've set for myself. This year I did not really do something drastic. A couple of years ago I did. But, uh, you know, usually I don't set any New Year's resolutions. I don't either. No, no, I don't because I don't know why. I feel like it's it be, maybe it's because I'm a school teacher. Because that... you set resolutions every Monday. No. Is that why? <laughs> because I do. I you always have do. goals. You, you gotta have always goals. have goals. And you but can, I you feel like in, in the school year, January is like halfway. It's a weird time to set a goal for me. For me, my <laughs> goal setting is really like August. I set it for the, the upcoming school year. But I do also set like, you know, and this – you do know because you live with me, but I, I very, um, I like work out a lot. I try to stay fit. I try to take care of myself. And, um, for the month of December, that pretty much all goes to hell because I am because the house was like food baking for about a month. and eating yeah. and it's cold out and I want to be cozy and I watch all the Christmas movies and the Hallmark movies. So basically for the month of December, it's a no go as far as fitness goes. So then by the time New Year's comes, I'm like, that's it. And the Monday of, after New yeah, Year's, yeah. I am back on track. And I think that's because a lot of people <laughs> feel the same way. You know, they end yeah. up feeling you know unhealthy coming out of the holidays or yeah. out of shape or heavy or whatever it is, you know, and guilty for whatever reason because they indulged, you know, yeah. on the egg oh. Lot. Whatever it is, yeah. you know. Um, so I think that's that way for a lot of people. And yeah, where you kind of stay motivated, try to stay motivated and goal oriented all the time. Yeah, everyone else gets off the rails sometimes. A lot of people get off the rails sometimes. I certainly right. do. Um, so it's a fresh start. Yeah. You know, and it's a, it's a, the calendar is a big reason. You know, you got to get used to writing 2022 or whatever the year is, as silly it's as true. that is. You might as well get used to some new habits. So, do you ever you know, do like randomly, like just write like, 1998 or something I like 2001 have or something. scribnered every wrong. Like, why? Yes. <laughs> Where yes. did that even come from? I have thrown out old addresses that yes. are, you know, three addresses it's like ago. Your brain and glitches you, a little you, bit you skip like an old vinyl record. Absolutely. You know, just the why, you know, the needle's doing its thing and then boom, boom. Yeah. And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> wait a minute. Why? why? Oh. Ah, good. <laughs> nice. Well placed. Well placed. That was not. See, so why that. wouldn't you want to do be a, uh, what do they call it? But what's a panda? Be a patron. Be, why wouldn't you want to be a patron right yeah. there? I mean, we're going to be popular. <laughs> Start dropping oh, names. Oh, good Lord. So 
why you ask, mm. would we be doing a New Year's resolutions yeah. episode two weeks into January? Because, you know, it's is, too late. Is it because we're behind? <laughs> no. Oh, good. I didn't think so. <laughs> the reason is because statistics show that two weeks into it, which would be around right now, is when most people give up on the whatever resolution they set for themselves. You timed it that way? <laughs> yes. That's almost a little evil. It's not. I People thought it was. People are falling a, off the wagon right now when you're dropping a podcast. I'm here on. to be a motivator. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Let's hope to it's motivate. taken that way. Let's hope it's taken that way. Um, but of course, there is the history or the origins of the New Year's resolution. I'm so married to a history. This teacher. isn't yes. really a self help no. show, no, but no, no, no. I'll try. I'll do my best in the end. But I first, you know, thought we could dig into the origins. Let's grow it. our brains. <clears throat> it's what we're here for. All right, educators. Game on. Thank you. All right, so the history behind New Year's resolutions. Um, this is taken from almanac.com and history.com. So believe it or not, like everything I tend to research, the idea of New Year's resolutions started over 4,000 years ago. It's a long time. It is, and I never would have thought that. I feel like that's a new, like, almost with, like, the ball dropping or, with, like, you know, that tradition I Felt like it was a relatively new kind of tradition, but it's not. No. So here you go. 2000 BCE, Babylonians celebrated New Year's with a 12-day celebration called Akitu, which is uh, started on the vernal equinox. So again, we're going back to, you know, those pagan times, polytheistic times. So the first day of spring, which is usually around March 20th, that's the vernal equinox. That was the time of the new year. Hmm, makes sense. Right? Things regrow yep, and all that. Makes sense. So as spring comes new life, planting of new crops, crowning of their king in Babylonia, and making promises to repay debt. Usually, for this time in uh, agricultural society, the most common resolution that was made was to return borrowed farm equipment. Which was, <laughs> I'm sure all good neighbors back then were as good as, you know, as good as good neighbors are now. Yeah, yeah right. right. <laughs> <laughs> so, what rake? What do you mean? Yeah. So that was the beginning of New Year's resolutions was on the vernal equinox um, to, you know, make promises to pay off debts, return, borrowed things, and kind of same thing, re- reset. A bunch Start of promises again. they weren't going to keep, just just like now, yeah. <laughs> or maybe had all good or intentions they were going to keep for about two time, weeks, you yeah, know. Sure. But then you're as broke and you need to borrow it again. Yeah, it happens. Yes. I need the rake. Mm-hmm. Yeah, gotcha. All right. So Babylonian, the Babylonian idea of New Year's was adopted by the Romans, including the idea of making resolutions. However, the start of the new year was changed from the vernal equinox to January 1st when the Julian calendar was adopted. So um, now January 1st became the first of the new year, and that was adopted in 46 CE. So January is named after the Roman god Janus. This god is two-faced, but not like you're thinking, like not like two-faced in a bad way. That is exactly what I was thinking. smack behind your back. (laughs) But two-faced meaning that he said he was said to have one face that looked forward to new beginnings as well as one that looked backwards um, to reflect and form resolutions. So the ancient Romans would offer sacrifices, again, not the type that you think, it was like sacrifices of like cakes and food and things like that to Janus, as well as make promises for good behavior in the upcoming year. Hmm, good. Hmm. I don't know why you always say that when I, it's about the Romans and not what you think as far as sacrifices. Well, I think when people hear sacrifice, well, you I'm a seventh grade Christians teacher. And no, lions and stuff. I mean, I'm a seventh grade teacher, and my students would be like babies. Oh man, you're kidding me. <laughs> you know, they That's sacrifice horrible. humans. I, I thought you were thinking animals. maybe like you know the. Christians and the lions yeah. and the, you know, the Colosseum and all that stuff. They no. say babies? Oh, that's the oh, first thing God, they I think. I could not teach seventh grade. <laughs> You're funny. Yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah, on, back on track. Back on track. So, uh, Romans, so Babylonians, then Romans, um, and then during the Middle Ages, medieval knights would make a peacock vow by placing their hands on a peacock at the end of the year, renewing their vows to maintain their chivalry and knightly values. So such bizarre rituals, you know? It's crazy things. I know. How did the, how did the peacock yeah, elevate like, itself to that <laughs> level? You know, why, next thing it's getting grabbed up and being brought to the round table. What's going on? I wonder, I bet you. I mean, they're pretty, I get it, but. They're beautiful, they're but are beautiful. they vicious? 
I don't think so. Remember they remember we were at the New New Mexico Zoo when the kids were little and they were running all around? Well they're huge and beautiful though. They were on the rooftops and They were everywhere. They were everywhere. They were all over the place. So I wouldn't say they're vicious. Well, I think geese are vicious. Geese are vicious. Oh, all right. So we're on the same. <laughs> yes, yeah. Very different. They didn't have geese running all around the, the zoo, did they? No, Well, peacocks. I was just wondering if they were knights. Like, that would be like the, no, you know, I, I show your bravery and uh, chivalry. And... Uh, what, to wrestle a peacock? I mean, <laughs> yes. I don't think that's what happened at all, dear. I don't no, know. I think it's because they're pretty and, you know, the leaves got to be whatever, something that was valued. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, the peacock was getting kidnapped and brought into the knights of the round table. Peacock foul. Wow. That's a uh, crazy little... <laughs> Crazy little, little fun fact for yeah, you. That's middle uh, Middle Ages, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, that was the Middle Ages. Yeah, they were a little off the rocker. So, <clears throat> by the 19th century, New Year's resolutions were very common. In 1813, a Boston newspaper was the first recorded to use the term New Year's resolution in an article that poked fun at how people were quick to make resolutions, hoping it would redeem them from the past mistakes or bad behavior. So, the actual term or phrase, New Year's resolution, was first coined, as far as I could find, in a Boston newspaper. Um, but this is exactly what I'm saying. It, in the article, it poked fun of how people were quick to make resolutions, hoping it would redeem them for their mistakes. Like, that's me. All right. Mm. I know for December I gave up everything. <laughs> I, I decided I'm just going to eat the cheesecake. I'm not going to exercise. I'm going to wear pajamas all day as much as I can. <laughs> watch all And then with an elastic band. And yeah. then as soon as January comes, I'm like, all right, I I am now redeeming myself. Got to make those jeans fit again. Yeah. Yes. So. Got it. I'm not alone. No, no, you're not. <laughs> um. So, let me see. I think this. Yeah, this is the quote from the Boston newspaper. Uh, quote. And yet, I believe there are multitudes of people accustomed to receive injunctions of New Year resolutions who will sin all the month of December with a serious determination of beginning of the new year with new resolutions and new behavior, and with a full belief that they shall thus expiate and wipe away all of their former faults. This is definitely yeah. That's I, that, me. That's classic. It's well written. It's it's apt for today. I mean, it's the same people. It's the same thing today. That's awesome. <laughs> I agree. Yep. December, um, you just go right off the rails, and you try to pull it back together come January. And it's a crazy like I I've, obviously, if my listeners know, I love that time of year, but. Um, it can be super stressful and the opposite for people. So I think that's another reason why whatever habits they have in place, they don't can't get to because they're busy running around trying to make sure, you know, that they have the elf on the shelf yeah, or whatever for, 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 yeah. You know, family obligations or whatever yeah. it is through the holidays. Yeah, and so holidays it's stressful. are different things to different people, of course. Um, so over the years, resolutions have changed. In the early 1900s, they were more of a religious or spiritual type of resolution. So resolutions would be more like um, to restrain from wanting material possessions or to have a better work ethic or, you know, follow morals of the commandments or just definitely more kind of spiritual or religious types of resolutions. And, of course, now most commonly it's about health, wealth, and love. Yeah, so it used to be, uh, <laughs> I don't know what the right word is. Now it's more selfish. Now, now, it's, yeah. now it's more about us. Back then it was about getting back to, you know, spiritual things or, uh, or being a better, be- better work ethic. Yeah, right. exactly. You I know? feel like it was like <laughs> Whether you're writing a novel, get back to being more you know, diligent. Being a better that. person as opposed better person. to gaining Being more fortunate. something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah yes. absolutely. Well, health is, you know, health isn't really... <laughs> It's fortunate, but it's definitely something you do yourself. Yeah. Interesting. So I found a Gallup poll um, that compared resolutions from 1947 to today. And I don't feel like they're all that different. You don't think they've evolved that much? Yeah. I'm going to read read a few of them. Skip skip by, yeah, skip by for some numbers or something. I'm not. I'm going to read them all. Well, read them all then. (laughs) You're the teacher. Go ahead. So in 1940, I'll read them from 10 to 1, right? 1 being the most popular. Sure. Okay. So uh, resolutions, according to the Gallup poll, in 1947, number 10, to lose or gain weight. I've never heard anyone well, say, Well, that's going to be very different. It's going to be very different in 1947 <laughs> to today, I'll guarantee uh, you. Number nine, take greater part in home life. Okay. Number eight, take better care of my health. Number seven, be more efficient, do a better job. Number six, be more religious, go to church more often. 
Number five, stop drinking or drink less. Number four, save more money. Number three, stop smoking or smoke less. Might see that a little less The smoke less, less or the drink less yeah, are for maybe. people who are like, I'm not ready to give it up, but I'm going to try to <laughs> right. cut down. But for New bit. Year's, damn it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be better. Uh, number two is to improve my character, live a better life. And number one would be to improve my disposition, be more understanding, and control my temper. That was from 1947. Well, I that's my number one every year. So that that one goes. Improve my disposition, well, be more understanding, and, think of and the control time my period, temper. Right, 1947. They're just coming out of uh, quite just, a I, bit of absolutely. Yeah, just back from the war. Yeah. Sure. So. Yeah, the, husbands, you wives, can everybody. See the all stress be or yeah. the temper of course, would, would of course. impact that. So, according to today's resolutions, <clears throat> so it's almost like so. Starting again with number ten, spend more time with family. Number nine, fall in love. Interesting. Number eight, help others fulfill their dreams, which I thought that was lovely. It is um, lovely. <laughs> number seven, I'm surprised that's there. Quit smoking. Number six, learn something exciting. Number five, stay fit and healthy. Number four, enjoy life to the fullest, which I can see that being more of a resolution now, given, you know what we've just kind of been through over the last couple of years. Yep, yep. Um, number three, spend less, save more. Number two, get organized. And number one, lose weight. Number one, lose weight. That does not surprise me. And again, yeah. that's a, that's completely inverse really from, you know, from the 1947 one where it was, you know, lose or gain weight. Right. Because. Uh, and that was number 10. Yeah. And now, and now it's, it's number like the one. number one. It's, yeah. now, it's number one and there's no gain. It's definitely lose weight. I can say no one really, I'm sure, sure people do, but uh, no, hard people, right? Yeah. Born out of hard times. Right now, we're soft people born out of soft times. Wow, harsh. Well, that's just what I feel like. <laughs> that's why we battle you and I make resolutions <laughs> and we try, right? And try to fit into those genes. It's a different world. Yeah. I wasn't trying to diss anybody. No, you're right. Yeah, it's it just is different just world. a different time. You know, I'm, I'm as guilty as anybody. Um, so there was an article by Jeff Hayden on ink.com and I really went kind of looking for different different sources. I was I didn't know how I wanted this to go because that basically everything I just told you was the origins behind the New Year's resolution. So it started the Babylonians to the Romans, made its way to today. Um has not changed over time except for, you know, maybe what people decide to use for resolutions or the fact that the Julian calendar was adopted. But um I found some stuff about, you know, why New Year's resolutions don't last and maybe how to help form a New Year's resolution that maybe can last. Oh, a little, little psych. Can drop yeah, a little, little psych. Just a little help. Okay. A little helpful hints. Nice, nice. We can all use it. <laughs> okay. Jeff Hayden, again, wrote an article. It was on Inc.com. There was research conducted by Strava, which was a fitness company, and they used over 800 million user log activities in 2019 uh, to predict the day that most people are likely <coughs> to give up on their New Year's resolution. So... They were basically the fitness company was using user log in and, you know, users log in their exercise that they're doing or their fitness um, activities. And Strava came up with the New Year's resolution as most likely to be given up by January 19th. So and Strava actually called it Quitter's Day. They like coined it. Quitter's Day. 19. That's the, <laughs> January the pr- 19th. primo day, primo day. The New York Post claims February 1st as Quitter's Day, giving them the benefit of the doubt that at least they'll try for the month of January, but then it kind of fades out. So there were different sources that had different statistics for when it's officially like people just give up on whatever. But, you know, the consensus being that almost everyone gives up (laughs) at some (laughs) point before the second week of February. I think that was like the latest deadline I could find. It was like the second week of February is like the the longest most people last. Um. (laughs) I think that's the basic flaw in just picking, you know, a calendar day rather than like, you know, building yourself up to it, getting your brain ready for it, making the decision and yeah, and just doing it, you know, rather than picking a calendar day, day to do it. But just Picking the calendar day, I think, helps help if you can be like, 
I think it helps you build up to it because you, you have prepare to build up to it. Though. You to can't it, just be but... binging to the finish line and, and expect to roll out of bed and mm-hmm. have it change your life because the, the calendar sets up. No, you so be that's ready to do it. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I wanted to talk about. But hmm. okay. top three reasons for it not lasting. Okay. Lack of self discipline. That's number one. <laughs> Which we've all been there. Yeah. We're like, you know what? Forget this. I'm. I don't have it in me. Uh, lack of time. So it sounds great, but then when you put the theory to practice, I'm going to work out for an hour and a half every, you know, three times a week, and everyday life happens. You don't don't have the time. Things to get do in the it. way, and you, yeah. yeah, you don't end up having the time. Find the time, sure. Or unrealistic goals and vague goals, which I think is the number one thing. So that's what I kind of want to talk about today. But so we're halfway through January, so we're coming up on Quitters Day. <laughs> this is aired. We'll probably be like a week ahead of quitters day so i thought that you know if you didn't make a new year's resolution like den and i really kind of didn't you know not officially i think in our minds we always try to again goals yeah set goals goals or whatever um but it's not too late to start so i figured like if you did and your new year's resolution isn't going well or if you didn't um now might be a good time to try to figure something out because it's always good to have goals yeah there's still time before quitters day yes there's still time before quitters day and it doesn't have to be new year's <laughs> it to does make not a have to be new year's absolutely you can set yeah. goals at any time and you should be and, and reevaluating yeah. all the time and preach on preach on yeah thank you <laughs> i agree so inc.com i just talked about that was the article where i had that uh, statistics from the company called strava but they are basically a website for entrepreneurs and they had a list of five ways to be most successful um, when setting a resolution. And I'm, I'm going to stop using the word resolution now. I want to use the word goal because I feel like I feel like they're the same thing, but people see them differently. Do hmm. you agree I with that? I think a resolution, at least nowadays, is more associated with New Year's resolutions. I mean, right, that's you wouldn't I'm say I'm making a resolution in your day-to-day life. Right. You know, you, I guess you could. But your resolution but, means that you're 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 making a decision. Yeah, you're resolute. To stick it comes boils down to the word. Yeah, yeah the yeah. root of the word, resolute. Yeah. I, I know, I get it. Um, but we automatically think New Year's resolution. Yeah, and you wouldn't yeah. use it in any other context. Yeah, the word almost uh, definitely, in my opinion, associates itself with with New Year's. Um, if you look back in like old writings, there were resolutions all the time, and but I don't feel like that's it's not a common term really anymore. Right, I agree. Right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with goals. Let's go with goals. I've used it a hundred times. Sure, I'm a goal guy. That's the trendy word. Right. Resolutions is out. Goals out. are in. Goals are in. Right. Yeah. Next year we'll be talking about something right. different. We'll talk yeah, about so how Nick and Den's new, new goals. New Year's goal. goals. New, new. <laughs> we'll come up with something. Yeah. Oh, in the meantime, too, catchy. I was really thinking like, wait, what? Why is a mouthful? So I think we should like deem ourselves like tri dubs or tri dubs. You know, like triple Can we dubbies. Do that? I don't know. Could you be a tri dub fan? I guess maybe <laughs> sure. I mean, I was thinking B dubs might come after us, but that's different. Tri dubs. Uh, B dubs, right? Triple There's got to be a tri dub out there. Triple W's, tri dub. We'll, we'll, we'll test it out. Let's yeah. see, see how Let it goes. Let us know what you think, guys. Sure. <laughs> Email us. Tell, us. tell us you like it or you don't like yeah. it. So, goals should be specific and doable. So, I'm ad libbing from this article that I read um, on that website because I feel like it's it made the most sense to me. Um, so that's what I'm going to go with. So first, number one is your goal should be a specific measurable goal. So if you're going to decide, like instead of saying, I'm going to be healthier this year or I'm going to get in shape this year, you want to be more specific in what you do. So what do you know, like, what does that mean for you? Does it mean eating better? Does it mean exercising more? Does it mean, you know, maybe you exercise all the time and you just want to increase it? Or maybe you tried all these diets and they weren't working for you. So you want to try something new. So you should be specific in what it is. So right, it could yeah, be measuring your waist, measuring your bicep, yeah. whatever it is, something like that. So instead of, you know, it could be I want to lose 10 pounds by March 1st. And that's your goal. And maybe it's a little bit of, you know, exercise and a little bit of nutrition. But at least you have a goal. You can measure it. You can look at it. Um, It could be inches. I'm a big fan of when, especially if you're working out, if you're, you know, building muscle, sometimes you don't necessarily lose weight, but your clothes fit different because you're building muscle. So you lose fat and you gain muscle 
muscle weighs more than fat, so sometimes that can be very off-putting for people who are trying to be healthy. So it's great to like measure, do waist measurements and measure your biceps and your you know, your thighs, and then you can be like, you'd be surprised because you'd step on the scale and it might say you weigh the same, but you lost, you know, five inches. That's huge. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a huge success and people don't realize that when they're trying to diet or lose weight. So Right, and that's just one example. But, you know, maybe it's uh, someone wants to get back into size 32s, you know, Mm -hmm. pants or whatever. But like you said, make it something more real. Something you can measure. Not just so basic, something you can measure. I'm going to be healthier. Yes, yes. And then you say by being Mm -hmm. healthier, I'm only going to drink, you know, smoothies for three meals for a week. And that's not necessarily healthier. Right. <laughs> so you right. got yeah, yeah, to yeah. be reasonable and you got to choose something that, you know, makes sense for you in your life. But again, it could be like, I want to expand my business. Sure. That's a great goal. Yeah, it's I want to make. It's measurable. No, that isn't. Well, expand my business is definitely measurable. <laughs> no, it's not. What do you mean? Well, it kind of is, but it's like saying, I want to expand my listener base on our podcast. But I know that, you know, my goal then is to try to get, you know, you know, 700 downloads, you know, or in the next couple of episodes, like you, you should have a number that like, what does that mean? Does it mean oh, getting I understand what you're four saying. more, Got it. All right. you yep. know, lands, I understand. Investments. Yeah, buy four than more properties than I did last, last year. year. Yeah, like it's more not specific. Just, not just debits and credits, I guess. Yes, is what it's you're not saying. just expand. Like, what is the goal you're setting? Yep. Obviously, you want to get better. Do you want to get better by one? Do you want to get better by. Right. Okay. Okay. So just being a little I have more to readjust specific. readjust my goals. Yeah, go ahead. You do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> no crap. Um, also, you know, you can piggyback on what you already are doing. So I guess we kind of just talked about that, but that's. Like, like I said, I'm, I work out. So if I'm working out all the time, then how do I get better at it? I don't have the time to put more into it. I am a 30 minute a day Mm -hmm. at the most. Um, I would, if I had the time, I would put more time into it, but I just don't. So, you know, I could piggyback off that and say, all right, I'm going to park further in the parking lot. So I have to walk more and get more steps in, take the you stairs, know, take the stairs instead yeah. of the elevator, which yep. I also like to do. Elevators make me sick. <laughs> They're gross. <laughs> they smell funny. Yeah, there's a breaking point. They make though. me sick. I'll take the elevator anyway, to the 28th floor. It could be to drink more water. Yep. Just to hydrate, a simple goal. I think everyone could use to hydrate a little bit more. I think we've gotten better as a society. Everyone has their water bottles, right? Carrying around with them their so. reusable yeah, yeah, yeah. water bottles. Reusable water bottles. That's hydro the key. flasks and their right. Nalgene's or whatever. But it could just be to keep a, you know, eight ounce glass of water by your bed or, you know, in the bathroom. You drink a glass while you brush your teeth in the morning and at night, and there's your 16 more ounces of water than what you were getting before. Yeah. So there's simple little ways to do But again, to do something that. measurable, sure. This is a good one, and I do this. You Introduce- definitely. <laughs> go ahead. You, you like it. Well, because I really feel like it helps. So, again, like setting habits or setting yourself up to be successful. So I the night before, I get my I always get my clothes ready for the next day because I don't want to have to deal with that in the morning. I would just like to get up and have, you know, have everything ready. So I have my workout clothes ready. And that just is one step closer because I can easily be like drinking my coffee, not have my clothes ready and then be like, oh, now I have to change. Now I have to do this. I have, I have to, to run back get it up. I have to, yeah. yeah. And then it's just, but it's all right there. I just, it's easier for me to kind of stick to my goals. So um, it's like, just helps me be more productive. Um, do you agree with that? No, I definitely agree with it. I mean, I think that falls in line with uh, a lot of the things that we do. We try to do, um, you, know, you got to do a lot of cooking if you want to eat well, that kind of thing. You know, you got to prepare mm-hmm. and because you know, it's very easy to go off the rails. And yeah, if you're taking care of your clothes at night and, and getting ready for the next day, then why wouldn't you have your workout clothes there right. also? If you intend to work out, so there's right. a mindset there. There's yeah. A, yeah. You set yourself up for success with that goal instead of failure. That makes no perfect sense. Also, eating, and you'll, you'll know this too, if you're trying to eat more nutritiously and you don't have willpower, like I say I don't have very good willpower. <laughs> like if it's around me, I would much more tempted to dig in, which is what makes a holiday so hard for me because it's all around me and I contribute to it. But having our daughter is home, um, I think Megan has made a 
different baked good every night over the last couple of weeks. And it makes it very difficult because we're trying to eat healthy. So just a simple way to like help yourself is not have it in the house. Like as soon as the kids all go back to school. (laughs) We'll purge all that stuff, right? It'll all be gone. I'll be in a better place because it's not so tempting if it's not around If the cookie's not around, you're less likely to eat them for sure. And you might be angry in the moment, like I really want a cookie, but you don't have it We all get cookie angry. We all get cookie angry. Yeah. But no, it's definitely one way to make it a little bit easier. And I think, you know... So having a goal, again, that you can stick to, you know, making life easier on yourself by, like, having the forethought to get it together yeah, and prepare and it doesn't and so have you to don't be have food, to deal you know, with it. Like, yeah. you use exercise as, a, as an example or, you know, whether it's getting your notes together the night before so when you sit down at the desk the next day, you've already got your notes right. and you already have a plan and, you know, to try to be better at, at that. But, again, set yourself up for success. Last piece of advice. And don't sweat the bad days. He stole it. <laughs> 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 Say it a little louder so they can hear you. And uh, don't sweat the bad days. That's right. We all we all mess up. You... <laughs> we all, all mess up. Sure enough. So it doesn't matter though. You don't have to like give in just because you whatever you ate the brownies that were on the counter yeah. because your daughter made them like I did the, the other giant, night. Giant wonderful or... brownies, Megan. Yeah. Thank um, you, Megan. Or you know that. Whatever. You just, you didn't meet that goal of 10 pounds by March, but you lost six. That's still something to celebrate. Right. And Set so, a new goal, yeah. you know, reevaluate and stay on track. Yeah. Reflect. Yep. What did you do? Yep. What could you improve on? Um, what worked for you? What didn't? And again, you know, just, it should be reasonable. It should be something that works for you. If you know, you know, you can't ever, you know, give something up like bread for for example, right, right. Um, then don't make that your goal to give up bread, but you could be a little more health conscious in the bread that you choose, you know, the types of things that you eat, how often you eat it, Absolutely. things like that. So just because you've, you know, had a bad day or your goal wasn't met by the time you expected to meet it, that doesn't mean that you give up on it. You just kind of reevaluate and readjust. Set your new goal. If you meet it, then you set your new goal too. Right. You congratulate yourself. There you go. And that's it. Okay. That's all I had. I feel like I was like preaching and that wasn't my intention. I just thought it was a great time to talk about this topic and the origins behind it because, you know, it's the time period where people start to get fed up and frustrated with their <laughs> The 19th, we're coming up on quit day or whatever it is day, called. Quitting day, quitters day. day, yeah. quitters day. And they want to kind yeah. of give up on it. So I was hoping to like give you a little bit of inspiration, like it's okay. Yeah, it's and just no, because you... you didn't meet it or you didn't even make one doesn't mean that you can't readjust and, and move on. And No, and we, I'm, we're we not above, uh, you know, swinging the pom-poms for, for you guys for everybody we do it for each other all the time and yeah. for our kids to try to keep them on track and so yeah we, we're, we're definitely in you guys corner but they're not easy to resolutions are not easy um goals aren't easy yeah. but that's yeah so i want to hear from you like yeah. for real we want to hear from you what was did you make a new year's resolution and if so what was it and did this podcast maybe help you to reevaluate it are you doing well with it um reach out to us we'd really like to hear about you know what's happening out there even if it's silly i want to hear the silly ones oh too. I, those are even yeah, better those are the better ones we all want to lose weight yeah. <laughs> um so you know reach out to us let us know again thank you for listening to us we're so happy with all of our um listener base it's really exciting to see you know where um where people are that are listening to us. Uh, Glasgow, shout out to Glasgow City shout in out to Glasgow. Glasgow. Love the island. I, we have more listeners there than in our own hometown. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so shout out to you guys. It's fantastic. Um, again, we're on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You can email us at waitwhatwhypod at Gmail. And um, any of our handles on any of social media is waitwhatwhypod. And hopefully we'll be changing that to try dubs. Also reach yeah, out and let us know. Reach out try dubs. <laughs> She's floating it out there. She's floating it out there. Um, again, you can always um, oh check out our Patreon site. Yep, yep. Be a patron. Get some cool swag. Uh, get, get some, some video cool clips content. Up there. Yeah, yep. I gotta convince Den to let me video him. Sure, no, no problem. <laughs> uh, shout out to Francis. Shout out to Francis for our, our artwork. Fantastic. Our artwork. Thank and, you, Francis. Uh, As always, remember to subscribe, leave a review, and tell a friend. See you next time. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye.